you know it's it was so easy life was so simple you know you okay, you were 60 years you retire and then listen to ramayana mahabharata bhagavad gita so no problems no tensions but then when you choose this kind of a life it is very difficult to retire first now i want to read i am not able to read because of my sight and i sit at the computer with my one finger i go on writing articles tak 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 like this <laughs> everything the difficult way <laughs> that that is kind of iran This is the uh, road to Guttigonda Bilam, and uh, this is where the first meeting of the CPIML took place. It was in 1969. Now it is 35 years exactly. just as the first meeting at Kutu Guttikonda Bilam was followed by Om Revolt in a manner of speaking this meeting in Guttikonda Bilam today hopefully will successfully talk about bringing back a violent free society in Andhra and i think it is an important turning point which is being watched with a tremendous amount of concern and anxiety all over this country because the history of free india has been that they never try to resolve any political issue politically with the commencement of these peace talks not that the peace talks will be successful whether it is successful or not what is important is people have been given an opportunity and this is what we have been trying to achieve in the human rights movement for the past 30 years as women we've been raising so many questions all these years we've been so troubled by the violence and the bloodshed and the torture with the ruin of people and the fact that a peace process is going to happen fills us with a lot of hope that far more important issues of day to day livelihoods and survival and women's security and women's needs will begin to get addressed for many years we've been trying this but we haven't perhaps there is a moment in history perhaps this is that moment when we will be able to bring these concerns before and we will be able to talk about them ikkada mana kasana report chestundi kabatti meer sakala meeting lo vinarade meer dargarade anagana meedandante meeku kaatal cheyandi download kaadadara meer meetini sakkaraga sakkaga nirgantaru andarni meeku dai chesi vaari So the movement is uh, on the one hand political as a political movement it is a conscious decision by a section of the communist movement in india that the parliamentary path will not bring a revolution and therefore they have to take to arms struggle the more interesting aspect of the ml movement is its social aspect because merely because some people take a political decision doesn't mean that uh, 
people will move but the movement was able to get hold of a whole class of people who were till then not part of the communist movement and who also felt sufficiently uh, uh, let us say disaffected with the existing system that they would support an armed struggle for uh, state power the poorest of the poor dalits and uh, scheduled tribes became part of this movement number of young people who joined teachers you know teachers were leading the movement here these people joined with a consuming passion for bringing about a social change they are not people who ran away from life or uh, who uh, were unemployed so they wanted to join this all this uh, simplistic analysis really does not hold water they were all people who believed in the values preached by marxism and maoist philosophy and they joined this movement with the full understanding what they are uh, in for and they were not bothered they arrested around 5000 people at the time and many of them tribals there was no adequate defense for them because they were even prosecuting in various uh, sessions jurisdictions and alongside of this they were also killing people in the name of encounters at the time they thought that it should be appear legal now that idea is not at all present in the minds of the police or the government so they used this uh, ap suppression of disturbances act which authorizes the government to notify disturbed areas in the state so the entire agency area entire tribal area was notified as the movement progressed and uh, that enabled them to arrest people and kill them all of them were really picked up and shot for instance adibatla kalasam was shot vempata was satyanarayana was shot and uh, uh, ramana murthy was shot tamada ganapati was shot and quite a number of people were killed in fake encounters there was no organization to protest against the atrocities management of the state in those states there was no civil liberties organization there is no organization worth the name which could raise its voice against this kind of atrocities then my friend ravi subbara who was in the cpi he was very much interested in defending these cases and in fact he roped me in actually he was the person who said uh, you must come and help us so i agreed and then we met at hotel haridwar in sulta sultan bazar and there bhakti bhushan mondal was uh, who convened the meeting uh, looked at me and said uh, since you have also some gray hair you should be the convener of this defense committee actually around 69 70 when kanna started getting all these cases of defense and you know, of political prisoners my whole life changed till then it was a nice comfortable middle class life children husband job school whatever but when this started happening there was there was a qualitative change about life everything began to change for me people would come in people would talk about things they'd leave kana would come and then he would be so full of it he would be talking about it and suddenly you know we were part of history from a nice middle class cocoon like existence we were suddenly becoming a part of history i didn't see it like that then i was just sort of very excited by what was happening and very excited that you know we're doing something important and and everything changed and gradually i think also the difference between my life in college as a teacher and my life at home you know i would go and teach shakespeare or milton and come home 
and find somebody who had been beaten up by the police lying at home and waiting to tell Kanna their story. I mean, the contrast between this dual life that I led became very obvious. And slowly I began to realize that my life was more here than there. <laughs> Our association with Kandagram started with the BAM and the books. The 60th year of CC, some 25,000 people attended. That is the writer's 60th day in Visakhapatnam. It was on 1st February 1970. So all of us were invited there. And there a pamphlet has come from the Vishaka students, Vishaka Vijayasthalu. They said you are organizing, you are gathering here, you are writers, you are intellectuals here, you are organizing here, you are uh, uh, realizing uh, Sri Sri as a progressive writer, it's all right. But just nearby Vishakapatnam, in Sri Kakulam forest, the Adivasis are fighting for their rights, for their self-respect. And not only they liberating themselves, but they are trying to liberate the whole human society. What is your attitude about that struggle? So we have to make a declaration and there itself that we support the Sikakram struggle. say that we have a right to take up arms. People have a right to take up arms. And we are asking the people to boycott elections. We are asking the police constables to join the, uh, the don't be on the side of the government and don't use the guns against your own parents or children or kith and kin. Such were the poems, which were in fact uh, particularly the poems not to uh, vote and use the bullet instead of ballot and uh, asking, uh, calling the constables as dear constable comrades and don't join the army. Such were the poems written in the, in the books, so they were banned. They were preventively detained for their poems. So I made them read the poems in the court. The court was packed with advocates. Charaban Razu wrote a poem for which uh, he was uh, detained. And that was called Indiramani Socialism Chalu Chalu. He read that so beautifully. Even today, I, I cannot really forget uh, that the way Charaban Razu sang that. Keeping time with his one foot, singing. You know, it was, it was tremendous. It was tremendous. And then advocates have not seen that kind of a display. And this was new. And we did that because that is the only way to demonstrate what the state is doing. And tell people what the state is doing for people who, do, who are dissenting. And it was struck down. Kanna's struggle against sedition is a struggle against colonial law. Now, this is something that we continued in the Indian Penal Code without change, like official secrecy. We talk about post-colonial India and so on, literary people and artistic people. Too. But much of India is really colonial uh, and uh, things stay as they are. And I think the struggle, what is sedition? Sedition, you won't believe me, but if you look at the text of the Penal Code, 124 or something, it in a sense says, that people have a duty to love their governments. It says sedition is causing disaffection against lawfully elected government, which really means that you must love your elected governments. Now that's a, a, a demand that is justified if there were all those lovely people, you know, <laughs> who can actually love, but that's not a simply unlovable, un, entirely unlovable lot. So, what Kanna is doing is to say, and uh, consistently, more than anybody else I know uh, in terms of legal challenges, 
uh, it the question was it's unconstitutional and people said it is constitutional so there are no struggle possible. But uh, sedition becomes a charge that you can use all too easily to justify unconstitutional governance and to promote unconstitutional governance. Now the argument is we are only detaining you, we are not uh, uh, taking away your other rights. Once you detain, you take away my other rights also. It is very hyper technical and hair splitting to say that you are giving me my freedom of speech but putting me in jail. If you put me in jail, my freedom of speech is lost. My right to form association is lost because I cannot address an association of people. My right to uh, assembly is lost because I cannot gather people together to listen to me. So all the basic fundamental rights are at one stroke taken away by preventive detention. And uh, this stage, the, the, this interpretation was never taken into account. This factor that in an area where it is important to people, in the political sphere, if you take away one right, you take away all the other rights. Preventive detention is to be high court, court to nadi, chattale court to waste nadi. Rendu saal at darigindi kaavatti rajay thalnu. Veil jabtunna maada laku, veil rastunna rajay laku. Zaru thunne cheriye laku. Oka imminent sambandha onna di. They do not say that uh, Naxalite politics is a conspiracy. Yeah, that they cannot say. That is not permissible. Or the CPIML party is a conspiracy. But what they really mean, if you look at the charge sheets that are filed in all conspiracy cases, is that party itself is a conspiracy. Individual criminal cases are filed 10, 50 and 20. They are all put together. And a lot of intellectuals and supporters and sympathizers and leaders of the parties are also made accused. They are made the conspirators. So conspiracy cases are essentially as an assault on the political faith, not on a, an act of crime. So initially the civil rights movement started as a protest against these things. Initially, rightly or wrongly, I mean, one, one can one should say understandably, because all over the world it has been the case that whenever there has been a suppression of, a, uh, of dissent, some kind of dissent by the state, uh, it is among the sympathizers of the dissent that you have had the first civil rights uh, organizations. Parvatipuram conspiracy case, the original charge sheet filed by Mr. Veerna Randreddy, who was the investigating officer, who gave a complaint to himself. He wrote the complaint and gave it to himself as an investigating officer of a particular police station. He, he presents and he receives. So, he, there was a list of 250 people. And by the time the charge sheet is filed into the court, this 250 people gets reduced to 150. 100 were shot. Then one judge, Sita Ramadhan, the justice, took the view that conspiracy is not made out. And so there is no necessity for going into the rest of the evidence. Because once you conspiracy is not made out, you, the rest, other evidence becomes irrelevant because you can't from the other evidence, you can't infer a conspiracy. You have got to establish that there has been a conspiracy and so this evidence is admissible. The other judge, of course, felt that uh, conspiracy is proved and he, I think, convicted about 10 people. So it had to go before a third judge and that judge was Muktadar. And we argued before him for another three weeks, daily, 10 to 30, 10.30 to And we were able to convince him that conspiracy is not made out and that individual offences are also not made out. So it ended in an acquittal. But then the funny part of it is similar cases, conspiracy cases. 22 conspiracy cases were framed within a period of, uh, say, from 69 to 74. <laughs> In the case of the Sikindrava, there are six people who have been in the telephone directory. There are six people who have been in the phone number. Now, the first 
it's a part of history of this uh, civil liberties movement that Kanna fought our case for 18 years without a single paisa charging us as fee. Not only that, in our case uh, there were so many accused who were small farmers or their wives and all that. They used to come to Hyderabad, they were penniless. Kanna used to provide them boarding and lodging and even to and fro charges. Uh, that way, at that time, let me tell you, Kanna had a very prosperous practice. He was legal advice to Paris and company in, uh, from Tamil Nadu and so many other uh, five-star hotels, clubs and all that. His practice suffered a lot because he took up our case. He became known as a slight liar. But I would personally feel that the government was interested in prolonging, prolonging the matter, you know, you harass them completely. So you have uh, the, the, the accused who were married then have become fathers, some accused have become grandfathers and I was the only one constant feature and then after the PP's argument in October, uh, the judge asked me, when will you have your arguments Mr. Kandabiran? Then I told the judge very solemnly, saying, Sir, I took up this case when I was 40 years old or 45 years old. And now, sir, I am 55, I think, 45, 15 years, 40 years old. I am 55 now. And my birthday falls on 9th November, that is a Monday. Please have it on that day so that I can commence my arguments. So the next day, the Accused got uh, uh, flowers, uh, birthday gifts, bouquets and all that. <laughs> Empty corn, not a huge bouquet. <laughs> <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑
a response of state panic. So when political managers are not able to cope, this is a high-handed instrument cope with resistance, popular unrest and so on. Pati Pati Venkateshalu rang up and said, Indira Gandhi has declared a state of emergency and I have just been arrested, so tell Kannapirana as soon as he comes home. And it didn't quite, I mean, I was very stunned that he was arrested at midnight in state of emergency, but what that meant didn't quite hit me until it kept happening. Every night around midnight, there would be calls and there would be friends, there would be people you knew who being in a, you know, who being arrested, they'd be called saying so and so. And Kana would just take it very quietly, he'd go, then the next day he would be arguing. You know, you go to the criminal court and then I found one inspector saying, here afterwards it is our rule. So I moved uh, Venkatesh uh, uh, writ petition, writ of habeas corpus, uh, by way of a lunch motion. And it came in the afternoon. I was uh, making my submissions to the court and I was vehemently contending that uh, there are no grounds for the arrest of uh, Mr. Venkateshwar because it was at the, ad at the admission stage, initial stages of the hearing. And, uh, and if they have grounds, direct the public prosecutor to produce them, produce the order and the grounds. Then the public prosecutor foolishly got up and said, the grounds are being typed. The public prosecutor was uh, Ogulpal Chaudhary then, was no more. When he said that the grounds are be, being typed, I said, you are, the court may record the statement of the public prosecutor and release Mr. Venkatesh. Because grounds are not in existence when he was arrested and it's being typed now. So he is entitled to release. So the judges felt that uh, the public prosecutor may be taken to task for ha having made this representation. And so to save the public prosecutor, they forfeited the liberty of a citizen. Nalgwandala repetitions are being done. Single handed. And Nalgwandala repetitions are low. Die hard. Naxalite the Kanji Mother Kunte, Lopera, Gangamte, Emergency Low. RSS Subaraid and a senior advocate to Padna Sansala, RSS Pillow and Gaga, and Nikesu Line is there. Pike a fight jet of Kalante, O Sutra Badhanaki, committed under the country. First thing a Jeptunar, advocate general, in Anta Kanta social argument in the Rata, he court to go in Richard in Chadikar and Ledu. All the fundamental rights are denied. So when the emergency says that. Uh, fundamental rights remain suspended. It, since the constitution gave you the fundamental rights, the constitution can take them back. I mean, it's a very superficial logic. Constitution does not give us rights. Constitution confirms that we have fundamental rights. That is a human rights lawyer's understanding of what rights are all about. If you, if you see them reasoning out on property cases, the reasoning is entirely different. You know, property is inalienable. Property right is an inalienable right. Whereas, a man's right to personal liberty was considered to be alienable. During emergency, what was the status of defense committee? Defense committee became non-functional excepting me. There was only one functioning member. The other functioning member was in the, inside the jail, Venkateshwaru, Patipati Venkateshwaru. 
So, some wise guy came to me and said, now that emergency has come, why do you want to continue the committee, why do you want to dissolve it? So, I told that member, please do not come if you do not feel like, I will not dis uh, dissolve the committee and I will continue as a one-man defense committee. <laughs> and that is how uh, I was representing the defense committee in all the writ petitions I appeared as an advocate. I asked him, I said, every single person who has been arrested during the emergency has run up here. And I have you know, given you this message saying that, you know, so and so, and you have gone and filed a case. A habeas corpus for them. When you are arrested, who should I approach? Tell me and give me the numbers so that I know who to call as soon as you are arrested. He couldn't think of a name. They won't talk to me, advocates won't talk to and me. And then he gave me the name of one lawyer with whom he had worked very closely professionally and who he had supported enormously in his work and you know whatever. That man was making the money, Kanna was doing the work. Srinath Murthy, Kanna gave me this man and said, see he doesn't have the guts to come out in the open, so he will not come and file a case for me. But he's very fond of me and I've done so much for him. That he will at least move and pay somebody, get some lawyer to appear for me. He will see that whatever is necessary is done for me. So you contact him and tell him. And strangely enough, the next day or the second day after that, Kana came and told me that the day Kana was walking along the court corridor and Srinas Muthi just crossed to the other side so that he would not have to wish him. People stopped wishing him, people stopped talking to him. People were afraid of being seen talking to him. And we'd get information that his name was also on the police list for all the cases that he had done. He was going to be arrested any time. And because of this constant midnight arrest, I remember right through the emergency telling her, I'm just so tired today, I hope they don't come for you tonight. I mean, I hope they wait tomorrow night or whatever. The atmosphere in courts, barring these Naxalites who raise slogans, or the detainees who will come and keep talking in the courts. People will come because they are all handcuffed and brought in a police van and their handcuffs will be removed and then they will be produced before the court. So leaders were there and so public used to come. You know, it became a sort of a meet, public meeting for me so that I could really tell them what exactly uh, are the facts of that particular case, why they were arrested, that rounds are not submitted, all these things were broadcast in the court halls, various court halls by me as a, that was the method I used. Uh, they, and there was, there was a lot of hope that uh, this institution really will do something about it. This institution will set itself against authoritarian rule. That kind of a hope and that test, it was actually the institution was tested during that period and the institution let down the people. Nobody would disagree that the emergency uh, was in fact unconstitutional. But we didn't have judges who had the courage to say that. They had the retrospective courage to review the emergency and uh, even say that it violated human rights. But at the time when they needed the courage, they lacked it. Not all, but the Supreme Court certainly. And um, then they apologized to the nation uh, after the emergency was over. The Supreme Court itself becomes populist and cathartic and makes several judgments which in fact make future excesses of emergency impossible. So there is a, in a curious way one learns out of uh, misery of disarticulation. But you, you can't protest when you should. Andhra Pradesh made two contributions to the modern vocabulary. One is uh, Bengal Rao's uh, English, whatever you may call it, bump off. He used to say bump off. He did not know English, but he, that was his English. He used to tell the officers, bump off. Now, uh, that fellow is creating trouble on the campus, bump off. <laughs> so he was bumped off, just like that. And then encounter.
you apprehend naxalites and then torture them in forest guest house pwd guest house which generally are at the periphery of a township or a village we were talking generally about these encounters and the way one should try to confront these practices and as we were discussing this in that meeting jwalamukhi got up and said why not we constitute a non official committee to go into the question of these encounters and in that meeting i was appointed as a convener to convene this body and i thought i should constitute a committee a persons who do not really belong to the communist party because i felt that they may not complete the task so immediately we arrived at a team to form the committee we went to tarkunde in the supreme court and asked him whether he would like to he would be the president of this committee chairman of this committee and he agreed and then with this list we went to jp within about a month we completed investigation into the giraipalli murders surabine janardan rao ne varangal engineering college student murli mohan reddy ne varangal lal bahadur college student anand rao ne varangal government junior college student sudhakar ne market lo pan chese oka aina koduku ee nalguru dalanga akade vellaru 75 emergency vyakti oka nela rojulake 24 july ratri vaana arrest chesaru వీళ్ళతో పాటు భిక్షపతి అనేటి హనుమకొండ వడ్డేపల్లి ఉండే ఒక పిల్లవాడిని అరేజ్ చేశారు ఐదుగురు తీసుకుపోయారు గిరాయిపల్లి అడవుల్లో చెట్లకు కట్టేసి విపరీతంగా చిత్రహింసలు పెట్టి చెట్లకు కట్టేసి కాల్ చేశారు నలుగురిని కాల్ చేసి ఐదో చెట్టుకు ఉండేటువంటి భిక్షపతిని వదిలేశారు ఎందుకు వదిలేశారు వాళ్ళకి తెలియదు చిత్రహింసలు పెట్టారు వదిలేశారు ఎమర్జెన్సీ లిఫ్ట్ చేసిన తర్వాత అతను ప్రత్యక్ష సాక్షి అయ్యాడు ఆ కేసులో నాట్ ఓన్లీ దోస్ హు ఆర్ బిలాంగింగ్ టు దరమ్స్ బట్ ఈవెన్ దేర్ ఫ్రంట్ సింపతైజర్స్ front organizers like pdsu people democratic students organization they were all naxalite uh, outfits but front organizers they were doing peaceful work they were not going to the forest and killing anybody and uh, a student of mine prasad he was also killed you know i was teaching in engineering college at that time he was just arrested and shot he was very active in the vidyarthi movement student movement i personally visited the guest houses and signed all the guest house registration books if you see the world books you will see kg karna viran secretary tarkonde committee is there and i used to ask the watchman to security staff to give me a copy certified by them and told them that they will keep this record without destroying the police did not really anticipate all these things then we went to guntur and guntur we and quite into deaths about deaths of about six people we also went to the burial place where these bodies which were shot some were cremated some were buried in fact in uh, giraipalli uh, i don't know whether i should search for that photograph the father of the father of janardan rao on the pointing out of a villager that the bodies were buried here the after cremation the bones were buried here he dug out and the bones were there takunde committee kind of reportage was the first of its kind you know we have had Uh, excessive use of force and unconstitutional use of force in kashmir in uh, northeast and we all knew about it i'm talking of the time of takunde committee report but it was never so fully documented by you know painstaking field research talking with people naming but and that starts a trend which happens then that survives in the 1984 sikh genocide where pucl produced a report naming people so it's a very valuable precedent of naming and shaming people it was broadcast all over the country through the tv 
and it really sent shockwaves to the people at that time. And Moraji Desai directed Bengal Rao to appoint a committee. Then we went to Desai and said there is no point in asking him to appoint a committee. Central government should appoint. Then he said it's a law and order matter, they have to appoint. How can a human life be, right to life be law and order? It is uh, right to life is also a central subject. The uh, article, the enforcement of that article is also re re rests with you, also rests with you. So you should appoint. Then he said I will suggest a judge and he, uh, he will appoint, it, appoint that judge. So he suggested Bhargava, Justice Bhargava, a retired judge of the Supreme Court. I had a great regard for Mr. Bengal Rao, the Chief Minister. He was a man of integrity and honesty, very straightforward person. So it was he who requested me when uh, the Janta Party government came and then they appointed Bhargava Commission. He was keen that uh, I should appear for him. Vangal Rao had the best of relations with Murarji Desai and Charan Singh. But uh, in spite of that, the pressure of the socialists was so much. And particularly Jai Prakash Ji was very particular that the, these matters must be gone into. Somewhere in July 78, he held his first sitting in this Dilkusha guest house. I still remember. And uh, Nagaridi's men, that is OPDR, came and made a big speech. We do not believe, we have faith in bourgeois system of justice. And then raised slogan saying, class justice. Justice in this society is class justice and all that thing and then left that being their position uh, at that time. But I told our friends that uh, you cannot take that kind of a thing. You are working, you, you are living in this system and these institutions will have to be used. These institutions have to be properly used, not for your sake but for the sake of all other people who may not be Naxalites. Because what, what is happening to you may happen to them tomorrow. And this method, once adopted, will never leave. And so we've got to fight this. Bhargava in his turn was also basically anti-communist. Bhikshapati was our star witness and uh, when I placed him before the commission, Bhargava was a bit stunned and I couldn't believe it. And he was very hostile to this man also. Some sort of hostility was there. Then I, I never bothered about it. I put a second witness, a third witness, how they were tortured, this, that, all. everything was coming out. Mamul Pandadi, a liar, who sat in the village, Japon, Tijestan. 
కనబలాని ఎప్పుడు అట్లా చెప్పాలి నువ్వేం చెప్పదలుచుకున్నావు చెప్పు వాళ్ళు వాస్తవాలు చెప్పడం మొదలుపెట్టింది ఇది ప్రెస్లో రిపోర్ట్ కావడం మొదలుపెట్టింది రెండోది మీరు విచారిస్తున్నారు సంపిన్న చెప్తున్నారు మేము అంటున్నది ఇన్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ దీనికి అంతా పోలీసు అధికారం బాధ్యులు చేయాలి ఇది గవర్నమెంట్ పాలసీ అని చెప్తున్నాం ఎన్కౌంటర్లు మేము ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ ఇట్ వెంట్ ఆఫ్ మోర్ దాన్ ఎయిట్ డేస్ ఆర్ సంథింగ్ లైక్ దాట్ ఆర్ ఎట్ ఇట్ మోర్ ఐ డోంట్ నో ఐ డోంట్ రిమెంబర్ నా బట్ ది కమిషన్ ఫెల్ట్ దట్ అండ్ పర్హాప్స్ రైట్లీ సో దట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సాట్ టు బి స్కటల్డ్ విచిత్రం ఏంటంటే వెంగళరావు కాలంలో జరిగినటువంటి అట్రాసిటీస్ ఇవి వెంగళరావును ఓడించే చెన్నారెడ్డి అధికారంలోకి వచ్చాడు కానీ చెన్నారెడ్డి ఆర్డర్ ఇట్ టు బి హెల్డ్ ఇన్ ఇన్ కెమెరా అండ్ వి సెట్ దట్ ఇఫ్ ఇఫ్ అవర్ విట్నెసెస్ నేమ్ డస్ నాట్ అపియర్ ఇన్ ద పేపర్స్ అవర్ విట్నెసెస్ లైఫ్ ఈజ్ నాట్ సేఫ్ వి కాంట్ అండర్ టేక్ దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎన్ ఎన్క్వైరీ అన్ ఎన్క్వైరీ ఈజ్ షుడ్ బి పబ్లిక్ and we walked out and tarkunde also i telephone tarkunde told them all the committee members i informed they all agreed to the course because we are carrying on they are not carrying on the inquiry here why publicity why why openness because uh, it is the greatest disinfectant to arbitrariness you are under the gaze of the people so i think in india the activists including this in this commission but generally have insisted on the public character of judicial inquiries courts or commissions doesn't matter what they are and the moment they seem to succeed the state must stop them and there are various ways of stopping commissions of inquiry i go in camera commissions of inquiry could be wound up So I think it was a very good move to say we don't give you legitimacy if you go private. So walking out of a participation in an official commission is as significant a gesture as in participating in an open public inquiry or on the alternative hold your parallel inquiries, citizens committees. But one thing that uh, I should say is that Bhargava, after uh, I summoned for that confidential memo, he sent for me and said, Mr. Kannabiran, you have made out your case. That means all the officers I have accused in that case would have been punished. So when uh, the inquiry was terminated this way, I asked Bhargava whether he would give, at least submit his report of that portion. which he has completed. Because he would not, because he said that the entire terms of reference, that means he was uh, uh, willing to continue for another two, three years. The police had been saying that they had not been doing any encounters. On the contrary, they were confronted with encounters and therefore they had to fight. Well, how far it is true, I cannot say. But... Uh, later events later events given impression to me given impression to me that uh, the encounters did not appear to be the real encounters they were make believe affairs and then people were in the meantime you know as the i knew that the commission uh, is likely to be wound up sooner or later i participated in muktadar commission where uh, there was a custodial death and a custodial rape and i appeared for ramiza b it was a custodial rape of this woman ramiza b in a police station the nalakunta police station 
When her husband found out and questioned the police, he was beaten to death. So it was, it was a custodial rape and a custodial death, which aroused so much public anger that people went on a rampage and then there was curfew and shoot at sight orders for three days. And there I exposed the nexus between the police and the pimps and the prostitutes in that case. And how, you know, the entire thrust was uh, that uh, the, the state took upon itself to prove that Ramiza B is a prostitute. That is all they tried to do. If she is a prostitute, our moral conscience will, will stay away from her and will not help her. And one learnt a lot of things. I mean, then, you know, our consciousness as women, our political consciousness was growing. We're not even yet in 78 coalesced as a women's group. But we went to attend because Kanna was a council, Rami Zabi was brought home and, you know, questioned for some time. And we were talking to different people connected with her. And we attended the commission. And when we saw the way in which this commission was conducted, I mean, we saw the policemen, we saw the others, I mean, talking, I mean, the kind of questions that uh, the Defence Council were taking. When we saw all this, we were shocked. I mean, it, it's like a realization of what it meant to be a woman in this country. And my favorite line and speeches after that would be like, man after man stood up and told Ramiza that I slept with her on such and such a date, you know, at such and such a hotel. And there's nothing else, no corroboration. So I said, any woman, I can be called a prostitute. I mean, 10 p.m. men can get up and give a date and the time, and that's taken for granted. So there's nothing that protects any woman from this. What Kanna learned was how people reacted. When he saw different parties and party leaders and groups and other identity groups reacting to the issue and the government, for all of us, it was learning of how government functions, government doctors function, the police function, how the legal system functions. It's an eye-opener for all of us. Some of it kind of knew, but I think it was step by step for all of us, a growth in how all these clued, you know, to cover up the truth. When Syed bin Ali uh, was shot dead in the Ramizabi, post-Ramizabi riots, so that Syed bin Ali was a, was a ma mafia gang leader. He was shot. And then when his wife uh, saw him being shot and then she filed a petition, it petitioned in the High Court and I saw one young man arguing. I told the young man, I will argue this case. So I took up the case and argued thinking, at least in the case of a rowdy, the High Court may hold that this encounter is a crime. So that did not happen anyway. I argued before Muktadar and then uh, I told Muktadar that the presumption in a, in, in a killing in self-defense is murder and uh, it has to be registered as a murder. And the person who says, I killed him in self-defense will have to establish it in a court. I showed him that uh, evidence act provision, he referred it to a bench. When the matter went to a bench, uh, the public prosecutor uh, asserted that he has a right so I told the judge, sir, I'll, I'll rest for two hours or three hours. Let the props prosecutor search the provision and place it before you, which enables a police officer to kill, shoot to kill a person. I'll wait for you. Today, tomorrow, you can give him any number of days to search for the provision. I'll wait. They, it could not be found. But then the judges thought that if, uh, you know, it's a very peculiar thing. He was a very good judge, K. Ramchandra, very good judge. And uh, he asked me, why is, the, why is it a police officer is giving, given a firearm? I said, he's given a firearm only to in self-defense. While regulating uh, peace, regulating people, processions, and uh, maintaining uh, peace and public tranquility, there may be uh, situations where he will have to defend himself. So he is given that gun. He is not given that gun to go and be trigger happy and shoot everybody he likes. Not, not done. Anyway, by and large I found that I was able to deal with these judges. They had this liberal value. I mean, they are not really strong on John Stuart Mill or Bentham and this and that political philosophy and all that. 
but they are very strong on very uh, sturdy common sense and a uh, sort of a sense of justice. Nagaridi conspiracy case when it came to the high court, Madhusudan Rao I think was the judge and the volumes of accused statement were placed before him. Uh, Nagaridi 517, another accused 220, another 300 <laughs> like that. So he said it was during the emergency, it was during the month of October. 1975 or September 1975. So, I said I am ready and then we will argue. Then he looked at the thing and said it is monotonous, I will post it before a division bench, two judges. Then I smiled and said but this is a case, this is not a case like uh, ordinary murders. This is a case about people who every one of them could be a chief minister of the state. They are very well read, well informed, great intellectuals. And if we uh, go through this case, I am sure you and I will emerge as better persons. I told him. And then I, I immediately, he said, what is the first document? First document is immediate program, Takshara Karyakram. So I told the judge that uh, there is a sense of urgency in a communist, but that does not mean he means it seriously. A revolution takes a long time to come, but he will always say it is an immediate program. If you read the communist uh, manifesto, you will see the you will see the same you will get the same feeling that they are in a great urgency. So I had copies of communist manifesto with him, handed over one to him. I had one and <laughs> read some passages and talked about it, and he got interested. He got interested and daily he was waiting for this after lunch hearing of the case. He also has a desire to be known as an intellectual, a well read man and all that. This is the thing that uh, saves this institution and if you are not able to encourage this trend and make it mechanical and boring, this institution will sink. Then accused number 30 before the government trial for the day. So there when uh, juniors come and tell me, I tell them that it, uh, the way you deal with the case decides whether the judge is going to listen to you or not. Judges have listened to me. To know a lawyer, when he enters the profession, I entered the profession against my will and I said it is a parasitic profession and all that. But you know the legend of the profession is something which is fascinating. You know, you hear of great trials, great cross-examination, great lawyers. You know, it's a dream. It's your dream to fight for liberty. It's such a fascinating, very romantic subject. But then I never thought that uh, my boon will be granted with such plenty. You know, I've been arguing only liberty cases since then. Then I became part of the civil liberties movement, APCLC, because as a member I was doing cases. I used to write statements for it and all that. 
as it was going on, the state conference of APCLC came. Varangal of it, state conference. Speaker Govind Mukoti invited us. Govind Mukoti, English tap Bengali at the Sugani, Hindi good or Rad Vadik Sariga. Nanu Dubash Garamanaru. I am a Kasipati, a cigarette at a has his own version. They thought Rajagopalan would become president. And Rajagopalan was taken there. Rajagopalan was speaking there. The first session Rajagopalan was speaking, it seems Rajagopalan started uh, how urban guerrillas should work, what kind of weapons you have to procure. And, this is in a civil liberties movement. Then immediately VV and Ranganatham thought, no, no, he is not a candidate. He cannot be a candidate. We have to search for other. Then uh, none else than Kanaviran. Okay, we'll ask Kanaviran. And that's how Kanaviran was. <laughs> when the APCLs were formed in 1972, our concept was that uh, two parties sitting together have decided to have APCLC. And decided to have APCLC to condemn the encounters or to condemn the atrocities uh, with this thing. And it is, uh, it will be generally directed by the ML parties themselves. So we have decided to have Patipati Vengadeshwarlu as secretary and all of us in the executive. Some Democrats and intellectuals from outside also will have APCLC, but generally ML movement will be directing them. Pradhananga Naxalite Lak Sammandhinche Na Sammasalim Him Take Up Jashir. Apatlo I Pauravakul Sangam Mida Konta and Bom and Pedaman Shulmak Jepe, the Naku, Okosari, Arozalu, Chala, Salu, Giano de Ungaligin, the Natican, and the Vina, and independent as Arman of Pane in Taki, Manamitla, Waldemida, Nirbandan Jeritaman and Kandin Sudena, in Kantak Minchiman of Bajatim, Leda, Samaj and Lante, Lady Ledu, Mudraka, Bajatilunte, first two Manam Nirbandam was the Kandin Jale, Rundu Manam Prajalandani, Naxalite movement to Sanbuti Perliga, Samaker in Jale. Our method that the subbill in the Jali, we man Muru Panaman and Jayala Jeppe, Nena Razan Kuni, the Chala Gopapan in Zangani, then name of Archer in Chal and Japan Kuni. Okarundelu Gerchin Trath and Pichindi, Adi Sajan Kazatla. There was a stage when APCLC was led by the party people. Marora was there, you know, Pradeep was there, they were all, you know, literally people from a movement. But uh, when Kanna took over, first thing that he did is that asked the movements to withdraw to completely you know keep off and that's where you know the an autonomous civil liberties movement started building up yana bhai okat nunchi appude motta motta sari hyderabad unit eppadindi paurakul sangam ante ee roju unnattu led aa rojullo aa rojullo maaku pradhana samasya em undante ee paurakula paribhasha the civil liberties discourse anedi daniki inka samajamlo gurtimpu ledhu gauravam kuda ledhu police lu kodithe tappindi ఇప్పుడు ఇట్లాంటి రకాలైన ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్స్ వచ్చాయి కాబట్టి ఈ పౌరహక్కుల ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ కు ఒక ఆమోదాన్ని సంపాదించడం పత్రికల్లో ఒక స్థానం సంపాదించుకోవడం ఒక పెద్ద సమస్యగా ఉండేది మొట్టమొదట పౌరహక్కుల సంఘం ఏర్పడిన తర్వాత పోలీస్ స్టేషన్ కు పోయి అడగటం అనేది మొదలై అసలు పోలీస్ స్టేషన్ కు పోయితే మొదట్లో వాళ్ళు ఏమనేది అంటే మేము ఎందుకు ఉన్నట్ ట్రై ఇక్కడ అనేది ఇట్లాగే మాట్లాడారు చాలా సార్ మేము ఎందుకు ఉన్నట్ ట్రై ఇక్కడ మీ అందరికి సమాధానం చెప్తే మేము ఎందుకు ఇక్కడ మేము ఏమైనా చేయొచ్చు అంటే ఎక్కడ రాసిందని మేము అడిగాను ఏ చట్టంలో రాసిందా ఏ చట్టంలో రాసింది అనేది నేను చెప్పే అవసరమే లేదు మీకు మేము ఏమైనా చేయొచ్చు అది మాకు హక్కు ఉంది అట్లా నువ్వు అడగటానికి వీలు లేదని చెప్పి వాళ్ళు ఆ రోజు గొడవ చేస్తున్నారు ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఫైండింగ్ కమిటీకి పోతే ఆపేది పర్మిషన్ లేకుండా రావద్దు అనేది ఏ చట్టం ప్రకారం పర్మిషన్ తీసుకోవాలని మేము అడుగుతుండే నీకు చట్టం మీద ఏ చూపించి అక్కర్లేదు నువ్వు రావద్దు అంతే నేను రావద్దు అంటే నువ్వు రావద్దు అంతే అని అట్లా వాళ్ళతో తగాదాలు నడుస్తుండే అంటే ఒక చిన్న విషయము పోలీసు వాళ్ళు కొడితే చనిపోయిన ఒక కేసులో ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఫైండింగ్ కమిటీకి పోయే అధికారం ప్రజలకు ఉంది అనేది ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ చేయడానికి మాకు చాలా ఒక రెండు మూడు ఏళ్ళు బట్టింది తార్కుండే కమిటీ రియలీ వాజ్ అపాయింట్ టు అస్ దట్ వీ షుడ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూట్ దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఫైండింగ్ కమిటీస్ అండ్ గో గో ఆన్ రిలీజింగ్ ది ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ టు ద పీపుల్ మోర్ టు ఎడ్యుకేట్ ద పీపుల్ అబౌట్ దిస్ దాన్ టు రీచ్ అక్రాస్ టు ది గవర్నమెంట్ బికాస్ వీ న్యూ దట్ ది గవర్నమెంట్ ఈస్ అబ్సల్యూట్లీ ఇంపర్వియస్ indifferent to this kind of killings so we we had this uh, fact finding teams with other from uh, other uh, parties janta party or uh, samada party 
as being members, Socialist Party, being members of the Commission, a larger group going and looking into things and uh, discussing these things and then writing a report and holding a meeting on the basis of this report and talking to them. This was all systematically done. Maybe Indra Veli Paul. Indra Veli Vela Lantern and a beautiful girl, Nirmal de Gragam. Nirmal de Gragna Pru, part of Padra, part of Antanad. Part of one team, part of Padale, Mem Rela Re Antanente, I a child of Palla joke just said. Rela Re, 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 and part put away. What could have worked a Nirval Mangane? Eight near my police or Motametation Ru, Adi, the Motametation over the border. And the permission led God to Pomadi. Ilare, Ilare, and the Yenan and the Egypt would both and run it. And the Clanaboa, then you can see that. A Pudu, a Jeep de Pitchy, Jeep Lotano, front seat Logurchon, may want the Inca seat Lo. Chepard, Ray. Miratla Gurcho and Enterente, Motam Police Officers and Nen, Ipur, Police CID Officer. Mirandaru, Saman and Algurchale, Pata Gitem Padatu. How would no Chorastran were after? Nan assist English. Everything is okay, the work and I salute Gurthur, Miriam Gurthur, then salute Atkin Podavan. A pretty police of Sandarunar, police of Sandaruna Tarvata, Mir meeting bit coats and Kanavaran Garner. Thank you, Honor. Nenana. You won't be meeting with the major name later. Are there police like a better than a meeting? Police like a chapale, rape, police lara, mir be the loo. A gold land in the great of the chaperu, police like a chapale, Pradle Kepur Chepe Dundra, Vetava, police like a chapale, eager mother better speech, Brambane. Athan emotional coaching of Pudu Chepe speech, you very cantuga. Chattamante in the Melaga Mother Better, Chattamante in the Atlani, Poi, 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 Raja Mirthur, Ad Aranala Vedava, Adakudu, Vidoga, Arvela, Vedava, Vidoka, and Pair Japudu, I have been Walakani, Walakuru, Waljapina to win away, Vedava, Mirakuru, Mi Vedava and Chapadani, what you know, Mehmanta Vedala, my Pedro Ratu. I have never been involved in APC. Never been directly involved in APCLC because I knew long ago I had gone on one fact finding committee. I knew the whole lot of them and I knew that in the APCLC I would never be more than a wife. I would be given a lot of respect, I would be you know, given a position on the stage, I'd be asked to make the occasional speech, but never would I be anything other than Kanabran's wife. And I had, I didn't mind being Kanabran's wife, but I was not going to be politically only Kanabran's wife. But then at that point, being a part of Sri Shakti Sangatana also because of friendship with all these women who were there and part of it. And right from then, I think that what happened was that there was this constant tension between political parties wanting us to become a mere women's wing. I would say there was almost a tension between the People's War Group and the CP Group, you know, each trying to claim us and each trying to use us to articulate their concerns. And, you know, seeing that the group had a lot of visibility, but wanting to make us a wing and how we resisted that very consciously and said we would not be part of any political party, but we would raise concerns. And we also went through a lot of contradictions in the process because we had our personal loyalties, we had our personal... Uh, uh, connections and at the same time we could see that a lot of it was very wrong and right from then dialogues with the party and questions about what happens to the individual, what happens to the women's question began, you know, were being raised. Bangarandongatan <laughs> Chattam Prakaran Kuni Padatuni. A Padatulan while parties Sundale than Edman Munday to choose Chapalega than Jepi, Mevan Kuno. A Pudu Kalo Jigar Matono Kuro than Arare, arrest in the Yestara, Midil Sanadin. Nizanga Madil. I would Kalo Jevanante, Nair and Jason than arrest to Jet Ledu. Nair and Jason of Anni Pakanu no Kota Demo and Jepi and Kotakunda, Rakshana Gulpinsa and Karajestra and Jepid. Yet the Dakura, that Telsitrata. 
ప్రతి మీటింగ్లో మేము పోయి ఇదే చెప్పేది ఫస్ట్ అసలు అరెస్ట్ ఎందుకు చేస్తారు చేయవలసిన అవసరం లేదు నేరం చేస్తే అరెస్ట్ చేయాలని ఏం లేదు కేసు పెట్టి కోర్టులో నడపచ్చు ఎందుకు అరెస్ట్ చేస్తారంటే ఆ వ్యక్తి ఇతరుల నుంచి సమాజం నుంచి ఆయనకు రక్షణ కల్పించడానికి అరెస్ట్ చేస్తారు మరి రక్షణ కల్పించేటోడు ఎట్లా కొడతాడు ఇది మా ప్రధానమైన ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ ఉండే చాలా సందర్భాల్లో ముఖ్యంగా ఆ రోజుల్లో గుంటూరులోనైతే ఈ లాకప్ హత్యలకు సంబంధించి మళ్ళీ పాతి పెట్టిన శవాలను వెలికి తీసి మళ్ళీ పోస్ట్మార్టం చేయించిన సందర్భాలని పోలీసులు వెంటబడుతుంటే మేము పోయి దాన్ని బాడీ తీయించి జడ్జి ముందు అక్కడ నిలబడి దానికి మళ్ళీ రీపోస్ట్మార్టం చేయించి దాన్ని ఆ పెద్ద ఒక ఆందోళన లాగా చేసిన సందర్భాలు కూడా ఉన్నాయి అట్లా మొట్టమొదటిసారి భారతదేశంలోనే లాకప్ డెత్ కస్టోడియల్ వైలెన్స్ అనే సమస్యను పట్టించుకోవాలి మొట్టమొదటిసారి ఇక్కడ పట్టించుకోవటం జరిగింది ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ ఐ థింక్ ఇఫ్ ఆల్ ది ఫ్యాక్ట్స్ గ్యాదర్డ్ బై ఆల్ ది ఆర్గనైజేషన్స్ ఆర్ పుట్ టుగెదర్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ డాక్యుమెంటేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఎన్కౌంటర్ కిల్లింగ్స్ ఇన్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ బారింగ్ ఓన్లీ ది ఎమర్జెన్సీ పీరియడ్ వెన్ ది సివిల్ రైట్స్ పీపుల్ ఆల్సో ఎన్ చేయి దే కుడ్ డూ దిస్ బట్ అదర్వైజ్ వీ హ్ హ్యాడ్ ఎ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ డాక్యుమెంటేషన్ అండ్ ఐ థింక్ ఆల్సో దట్ it is partly to the credit of the civil rights movement in andhra pradesh that we have been able to educate the ordinary people that encounter means murder today one does not have to tell them nepal reddy one 18 year old boy and uh, uh, parseya and uh, rabindar reddy who were being taken over accused in the secunderabad conspiracy case were taken to the magistrate's house for judicial remand as soon as they came out of the magistrate's house they were shot so we went and asked the magistrate he was in judicial remand and he allowed him to die george fernandes was in the team which uh, which went and interviewed that magistrate in so in surya pet i mean this was going on this uh, i failed in my attempts and then we say this two deaths and another death we put it to in a, sent it as a writ petition and uh, it was pending in the high court until nt ramarao became the chief minister and when nt ramarao became the chief minister we were represented that those they that have become regular now then the court directed that you place all that material before the co- government and see what response it has post it after one month they said and then he placed all the material before the yes thing and uh, in the meantime you know it was 87 past 87 so two petitions were filed in uh, uh, the supreme court and one with reference to custodial deaths also and all these petitions were dismissed by the supreme court on the ground that you can go and file private complaints when i say that a police establishment is killing people as a matter of policy we never expected the supreme court to respond like this but it did respond like that then ultimately what happened was uh, madhusudan raj yadav was killed here in the city one fine morning in the early hours so early hours means what 7 7:30 at the time he was shot by varangal police then i heard the news that uh, one identified a naxalite belonging to pwg he does not belong to pwg he to mislead the uh, people because they thought pwg has a sanction and so we must put pwg to have uh, exercise this invoke the powers of social sanction so they put it like that then i walked into the court and made an oral application to uh, detain the body instead of cremating it and to hand it over to his wife so the wife went and identified that body as that of a husband and then the, the case went on and he gave a judgment saying that encounter is a homicide it has to be investigated and on investigation the person who committed the murder must be prosecuted after so many years of toiling in 1997 i got this judgment 75 vache varaku oka vaipe em taada vachindi dani duryogam vipariitanga jarigindi రెండో వైపు పౌరహుల ఉద్యమం చాలా తీవ్రంగా కావడం వల్ల వాస్తవానికి మిస్సింగ్ కేసులకు మిస్సింగ్ కేసుల విషయం టేకప్ చేసినందుకు టాడా కేసుల విషయం టేకప్ చేసినందుకు పౌరహక్కుల నాయకుల భౌతికంగా నిర్మూలించే స్థితి కూడా వచ్చింది మొట్టమొదటి మిస్సింగ్ కేసు ఎనభై నాలుగు డిసెంబర్ పద్దెనిమిదిన కొడవటి సుదర్శనని కాజీపేటలో వరంగల్లో కాజీపేటలో ఒక ర్యాడికల్ యూత్ లీగ్ కార్యకర్త 
సైకిల్ తీసుకొని ఓ గ్రామానికి పోతూ ఉంటే అరెస్ట్ చేశారు చిత్రహింసను పెట్టి చంపేసి ఎక్కడో ములుగు ఏటు నగర అడవుల్లో తీసుకువెళ్ళి కాల్ చేశారు ఎన్కౌంటర్ కూడా ప్రకటించలేదు రెండు మూడు రోజుల నుంచి తల్లి పోలీస్ స్టేషన్కి వచ్చి నా కొడుకుని మీరు ఎత్తుకొచ్చారు మా కొడుకు తీసుకున్న సైకిల్ ఎక్కడ ఉన్నదని సైకిల్ చూపిస్తూ ఉన్నది మాకేం తెలియదని చెప్పారు ఈ కేసు మీద డాక్టర్ రామనాథం గారు నేను మేమంతా వెళ్ళి ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఫైనింగ్ చేసి కొడవటి సుదర్శన్ను ఎస్ఐ యాదగిరి రెడ్డి చంపేశాడు అని ప్రకటనిస్తే పత్రికల్లో చాలా పెద్దగా వచ్చింది పద్దెనిమిది డిసెంబర్ ఎనభై నాలుగులో ఇది జరిగితే రెండు భై ఐదులో సెప్టెంబర్ రెండున యాదగిరి రెడ్డి హత్య జరగగానే ఇది ఇంకా యాదగిరి రెడ్డి చేసిన చాలా దుశ్చర్యలకు వ్యతిరేకంగా పార్టీ అతన్ని చంపేస్తే సెప్టెంబర్ మూడు ఉదయమే డాక్టర్ రామనాథం గారిని చంపేశారు బాల్గోపాల్ రింగ్స్ మీ అప్ అండ్ సేజ్ వేస్ కన్న బిర్యానీ సిటీజ్ ఇన్ కోర్ట్ ఈ సేజ్ టెలింగ్ దిస్ బిన్ అటాక్ ఆన్ రామనాథన్ సో ఐ సెడ్ హౌ ఇస్ హీ పాజ్ అండ్ దెన్ హీ సేజ్ హీస్ డెడ్ అండ్ దాట్ వాజ్ ఐ మీన్ ఫర్ మీ ద ప్రాబ్లమ్ వాజ్ కన్న కేమ్ బ్యాక్ అండ్ హౌ టు బ్రేక్ దిస్ న్యూస్ టు హిమ్ హౌ టు టెల్ హిమ్ దట్ ఇస్ మ్యాన్ యూ స్పోక్ టు ఇన్ ద మార్నింగ్ హెస్ జస్ట్ బిన్ షాట్ డెడ్ దట్ మార్నింగ్ ఐ టోల్డ్ హిమ్ డోంట్ గో టు ది డిస్పెన్సరీ సో డోంట్ గో దిస్ మ్యాన్ మెంట్ shot at least kavaka reddy also the same thing and then we had to go after ramnathan was killed we went there to attend the funeral we went there then the minute the body left i mean like thieves i mean i and i'm always there to see that this kind of thing happens because otherwise what happens people surround him then they're chatting and they go on and on the highway anything can happen i mean the thing is also to get him out of there quickly before anybody realizes he is left while he is still chatting and so on just move quickly and get out of the place so these kind of things is things i have to deal with without seeming to deal with them without you know making it a concern but also seeing that this kind of an enormous waste doesn't happen he was such an excellent person and he was a good doctor he was a pediatrician I asked him to come away to Hyderabad. Then he smiled and said, after all, I treat policemen's children. Why will they come and kill me? They just killed him. Why was Yadgi Reddy killed? Why is there no control? I assumed it was an uncontrolled, adventurous attempt of the party. And Vivi looked at me and said, what made you think it was unplanned? Of course, it was a planned killing. Then I turned around and asked him, why are you mourning Ramanandan's death? If that was a planned killing, then you should have known that this would be the logical consequence. What are we mourning about? He had no answer. At one point of time, more than half the executive committee members, state executive, were in jails. And uh, uh, Balgopal uh, was uh, being arrested and pummeled. All this was happening. They did not really touch me. I don't know why. Even to this day, uh, it really is surprising. But uh, the support structure around me, they were annihilating you annihilate dr ramnath you annihilate uh, lakshma reddy who was a senior executive member in the state committee then later you annihilated prabhakar reddy a young lawyer a general secretary of the district bar association he wrote a letter to the collector saying my life is under threat one week before his death the collector did not do a damn thing about it and that boy was shot they just walked into his house he was shot on his forehead and they made the blood stains clean by his wife that is how they behaved a pclc may be a front organization of pw there is nothing wrong in having a front organization according to me they want to see that their uh, interests are looked after properly they have a pro- front of it so long as it does not do unconstitutional work you cannot simply say 
that uh, it's a front organization, we would like to eliminate members. Azam Ali was one of the uh, uh, finest fellows I have known. He, he was so jovial, he was so helpful to the people of Nalgonda. Nobody, nobody ever thought that he will be killed. He was hacked. Purushottam was a good leader, he was hacked. And then law and order is running berserk because nobody is controlling them. It was so terrible, you know, I used to sit and I never used to go on work to Delhi for more than one day. I used to get back immediately. I was afraid of leaving to any place because something may happen here. That fear was there. <coughs> and that fear also was partly responsible for my not taking up any work in the Supreme Court. That fear that something may happen in my state. Some young friend of mine will be done to death or some carnage will take place. You know, when you are committed to human rights uh, work, it is not some sort of a, we, we, we were doing part-time, but it was not a pastime for us. Yes. It, it, we meant business. We wanted to stop this. We want to stem this rot. We are all big officers, we have taken you into custody, Giraftarjis, because we want our comrades to be released. The government is picked up some of our comrades and they are in Visakhapatnam jail and some in Kakanda Rajamantri jail. So we have taken you into our custody. And uh, the government, I mean, he went on giving a, some long lecture on imperialism, capitalism, whatever, all that, and said that this is our demand. And if the government doesn't consider the demand, you will all be killed. In the night at about 1.30, Yuganda rang me up and said that uh, Shankaran is kidnapped. What shall we do? I told him, you, please, you are issuing a statement. Please add my name to it. That's all I can say. I can't do anything else in this matter. Then, again, after half an hour, he again rang me up and said, No, Shankaran is kidnapped. We must do something about it. I said, What is it that you think I can do? I can't really go into the forest in search of Mr. Shankaran or ask the, uh, meet the PW and talk to them. Because uh, the most likely event that is to happen is I will be shot. And I, I cannot, as a citizen, interfere in these things because it's a matter which the state should look after and I have no place in it. And the government tells me that uh, you can go and hold talks with the party or party leaders and then take steps to secure the release of these officers. If they give such letter, on the strength of that letter I can go. But then NTR was not willing to give that permission. And I was very stubborn. I said, all the secretaries, you are meeting, cabinet secretary at his meeting, and have resolved that uh, something would be done for Shankaran. All of you sign a letter and give it to me. They have that uh, transistor radio, that's the main communication they get from outside. So as soon as they switch on the radio for the news, so we are all listening, sitting together. So the news, first news headline itself was six IAs of was kidnapped or something, eight IAs of kidnapped in Andhra Pradesh or something. And then they said, uh, at that time Chidambaram was Minister for Delhi, Minister of State for Home. He announced that the commando force was 
paying cent and something like that was first headline news. Then they started getting excited. They said, Commander of Force will come and uh, kill us. <laughs> I don't know how they thought like that. Then they said, no point in hanging on to you people. We'll finish you off and then we'll also go away. We don't want to wait for the Commander of Force to come and kill us. <laughs> then really at that moment, it's about dark, about 7, 7.30 in the se second day, night. So they separated three of us. They knew by that time who was senior or who were younger and myself that Sastri, district collector and Manohar Prashad. Three of us, they made us stand, sit in front. Others were asked to keep a little away. They went and had a hush-hush talk. Then this Kanakaya and uh, one more. They came to me and said, we have decided to finish three of you. And uh, that's all. <laughs> then I really didn't know what to do because this. And they were pointing their rifles at us. Then, of course, uh, frankly, in a way, I was a little worried, but I was not unduly worried. So, I just told them that, okay, finish off, you don't need to go on telling that you are going to finish off. But only be sure that if you do it, I will con you, are, you call yourself terrorists. You don't call yourself Naxalites or People's War. We are not called the Commando Force. We didn't take, send any message or anything. They, they, you, you must understand that the state will react in a particular way when top officers of state are kidnapped. If you don't have that much understanding, I don't know what to do with your political understanding. For the first time I travelled in first AC. I have never uh, travelled in first AC. I was taken in first AC from here to Rajamandri. And at the station, that's the first time I met a police officer. I, as a matter of uh, principle, I refused to meet any police officer. They have to come to the witness stand in a case and I will deal with him. But with them. But I will not go to a police station, nothing, everything will be telephone and I'll secure my result. Then I went and talked to these people. Then these boys had some doubt that I was forced by the police to come there. So it took nearly 15 to 20 minutes to convince them that I, out of my own free will, I am visiting them and I am taking them with me for purpose of this release of the hostages. So by that time it was evening, we were walking and resting, again walking. Evening we sat on a top, a hill, small hill plateau. They were singing songs, we also joined in some songs. The sun was setting. It was like a, almost a revolutionary cinema scene. All of us on the top of the hill in the sun setting, songs being sung. And, and they were getting some news through couriers. So suddenly some courier came and said that uh, some people are coming. Mr. Kannaviran is coming. Shankar was very upset, I think. He quickly got into the car and uh, uh, said, let's go. But then the boys told me that uh, you must give us some time to disappear in the forest. Otherwise, they'll shoot, shoot, shoot us here itself. So I said, all right, that is part of the deal. So I took him to the guest house and said, let's eat here and go. Shankar was not willing to even eat. I said, sorry, I'm a diabetic. I have to eat and go. Let us eat and proceed. So all the, all the people were fed who came with us, policemen and others, they all were fed. And it took about 10, 15 minutes. And then we went away. Then we went, came back and then uh, there were a lot of explanations to offer in our own committee because uh, this is a this is a very peculiar situation where a human rights activist intervenes and uh, instead of putting the state to difficulties, you know, 
you intervene and see to save the state's situation, save the situation for the state. So, I remember Kodan coming here and saying, supposing a police officer is kidnapped, will you go to his rescue? That was the first question that was put to me on that next day morning. Then I said, of course, I might, depending on which police officer is kidnapped. I was in the forest. 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 వీళ్ళు ఇద్దరు మధ్య ఒక మనిషి అట్లా కాదు ఇట్లా కాదు వినండి కూర్చోండి మాట్లాడండి అని చెప్తే సరే మీరు చెప్పారు కదా మాట్లాడదాం అనేటటువంటి పరిస్థితులలో ఉండేటటువంటి వారు ఒక వ్యక్తిగా అనుకోవడం కరెక్ట్ కదా They had kidnapped some 12 policemen in Karimnagar. So the police department was saying, if a single policeman is touched, then there will be no Valgopal tomorrow. Finished. It is as simple as that. Then these people got terrified. I came here. Then I said, all right, allow me to go back. Then I went to some of my friends in the secretariat, you know, who retired or working. I told them as to what exactly the government wants to do. And the message that came was terrifying. They said, no, they have told the chief minister also, NTR also. Now NTR also cannot intervene in this matter. They have told him that if a single police man is touched, then they will kill Balgopal. So the only way to save him is to send a message to that Naxalite uh, leader, leaders or leader who have kidnapped him, not to harm him. So the message was sent because Varvara was here and others were here. The message was sent and then they released the 11, 12 policemen and they released Balgopal. So we went to this Koyuru. Hargopal came with me. And we went there to the forest town and Arjun Rao for the first time sitting there, he thought that if he goes there, they will come with their AK-47 and put the AK-47 on the table and talk to them. It does not happen that way. It is a very painful process of getting at them and talking to them and coming back. They won't come to you. Hargopal was picked up from that side and I was picked up from this side by two motorcycles and said, come. And we talked to them and, and I said that woman, a woman is... Uh, uh, on hunger strike, I say, her husband is a diabetic, I believe, and uh, you have brought him by. Do you want to kidnap this poor fellow? So that fellow said, Sir, what is the donga, sir? What is diabetic? What is Moscow? What is the name of 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 the name That's, that's what they told me, told us. Then anyway, we had discussions with them and then uh, I said, this is not fair on your part to do this. You must release them unconditionally. Don't expect uh, this Kranti uh, Ranadiv to be released or uh, so that you can take him and all that. I am not part of the bargain. So far as I am concerned, as a human rights activist, I am telling you that you should, and APCLC president, you should release him unconditionally. Both the sides took a very strong line. I mean, the squad saying police should be withdrawn five kilometers. Then only they will come for talks. And the police said under no condition they will withdraw the police. And the IS officers were sent for negotiations. 
were not able to convince the police. And there was a deadlock. Karna said, we will now address a letter to the chief minister and also to the party. I thought that was a master stroke on part of Karna. Now he said, we will take the issue to public. It's no longer you know, an issue between the police and the hostages or the movement, but it's also an issue between the civil liberties movement and the people. Maybe that debate and what we initiated after, uh, you know, in the course of, uh, you know, the kidnap was uh, ultimately responsible for uh, the People's War and other Naxalites group to give up kidnap as a form of, uh, later there were no kidnaps. But finally, they almost took a policy decision not to kidnap anybody. Four days or five days after my return, that Balaraju himself came here to my house and gave me the letter they had written to me, saying that you have got great faith in bourgeois democracy, uh, and though they have not handed over Kranti Randevet, we have released him, and the letter is sent through the hostage, Mr. Balrasu. That was one situation where you also start understanding that the police in Andhra was also becoming autonomous. In the sense, if they started arguing with their own political masters, this, it was not desirable to release, uh, no, knowing fully well that uh, political masters already committed. So that shows that, you know, it's not that totally they are going by the political governance, but uh, they have now acquired a certain degree of autonomy. That autonomy, which we have seen in the Koyur kidnap, has now gone to a stage where uh, they, may, they, they may not now listen to any minister. And in all uh, private discussions, several ministers are saying this also, that they don't listen to us. Previously, I remember occasions when a district judge came, the police, uh, superintendent of police of the district will go and open his door. And now police say no, the SP is uh, equal to district judge and DIG is superior to district judge. And all these kind of things, this, this is the sort of talk that one hears about. And all the police forces were, have become paramilitary forces. They have at their disposal paramilitary forces. You have here Superintendent Police saying, you kill Naxalites, we will not prosecute you. Now today think, they are thinking that he has finished Naxalites. He goes to Vijayawada and says there, you kill rowdies, we will be with you. And the other day in the Teja, that snippet you, slip, snippet if you, call, you, you must ask that fellow. He shows, he calls the TV, summons the rowdies and goes on stamping on their bare feet. And it is shown in the TV. It was intended to be shown in the TV. If they could become so brazen in their misuse of power, there is really radically something wrong in, this state, in, the, in all these states. How are you going to deal with these problems? How do you restore democracy without restructuring the administrative system which eliminates every possibility of impunity? Unless you eliminate every possibility of impunity, you cannot have democracy in this country. And human rights is all about democracy. It's not some uh, great uh, philosophy of revolution. Then under the 1907 Criminal Law Amendment Act, the party was banned. So, Kanaviran gave a statement that uh, Supreme Court has struck down this act. Under this act, you can't ban a um, uh, party because uh, afterwards the constitution has come into force and those laws are not tenable. So, in a public meeting, I also told that uh, this is illegal. Nehru Mali Janardhan Reddy, returning I think from Delhi, gave a statement at the airport itself saying Mr. Kanaviran can go and get orders from the court. 
I said I am not going to run for everything to the court. This is clearly invalid. There is no question and I need not go and everybody has a right to deserve with this order and that is what will be done. Then immediately on a, on a very emergent basis, he brought about an ordinance called the Andhra Pradesh Public Safety Ordinance which became an act later under which now PW is banned. It continues to be banned. In fact, when uh, N.T. Ramarao's uh, time it expired, can be only for 2 years or 3 years, it expired. I went, I went along with a team of persons, writers and others and we argued that against the ban, saying that no political activity can be banned. Nenu Balagopal Garu Mariu Haragopalu Kanabraman. Andaram empty Khan Garunar. Andaram Akadik Velavaraku, Athan Room Loku Velale, Asal Yor Velale, Nuvo, Nuvo Antarente, Hackney and Botharadi, and Mundu Velte, and Enka Chinna Pilagada, are the Shetuat Kun Potter Sudu to Vasaleka, Mela Woker and Koker Woker and Ko, Room Lok Vela. Velangane, Konab Raman Garu. Maha Pursulumir Witcher, Rundi Kurchundi and Ayana Mundu Benchlo, Bay Mandaram Gursunam, Entramara Garila Gursunar, Gatragaru, Gbal Gopalgar, Kurchundanar. Sare Matladale, Andaram Hormogor Zuskuntu Gursunam. Your Matladale, Ye Madagale. Antalone Kanabarangar Lesi Miru Chala Gopavalu Kane Nukat Cheptuna Kachitanga. People saw our part with a ban with the Alanad. Kanab Hamangaru, Mir Pedawalu Chepper, Kobati Bihan at Testunanad. A put in a Mokam Lona Anandani, Chirunavutonavi, Okamatanad. In the Kantathan emotional so, I the Mir Gopawalu than a committee under Gan Kuntunan, commit Kandanad. And I can live on a Jay Prakasnar and a Yetcher the Ravalu Vilanta, Entramaro Chole the Gatiga, Jepper Malachusagusa. Chepangane. Kanna Brahman Garu Rundi Rundi Hanadu. And I am going to go over to India and I am going to Mali Vili Kanna Brahman Jepet. No more discussion. No more compromise. Mir Cheper than Katubadunda. Mem Katubadunta, Mem Shertula Chapandi. Mem Walla Quin Pistaman. I think that when you look at the civil liberties movement, they basically looked at only political and civil rights. And they felt that always civil liberties means to look at the repression of the state and they were not refusing to look at anything else. That personal rights, that human rights, that personal liberty expands far beyond the public domain into the family, into the private domain, into relationships between people was something that was beyond the understanding of and I think it has been the women, women's movement, it has been feminist perspectives that have expanded the whole definition of human rights, expanded the whole scope of human rights. I mean, when we started talking about the indivisibility of human rights and saying you can't separate it from the private and public domain. But when in the APCLC, Vindhya did a study to show that dowry debts far exceeded the number of encounter debts in the state, year by year she did a study, collected statistics and put it down and held a convention, I mean their APCLC convention that year was on dowry debts and you know, uh, women's rights. They were shocked, these women were shocked to find that the men behaved as if it's some domestic matter. It was almost a kitchen issue that they didn't want to take part in. But the women were thrilled, they were enthused, they came in large numbers. But I think that this is what has happened, that slowly as a result of what has been happening outside, what we've been writing and thinking and talking about outside. The questions we've been raising in person to different leaders, to people like Kanna, and as a result, Kanna raising it outside. Our talking on other platforms, see, that visibility has changed the environment. I had a few Dalit students, I was then teaching in a university, who were, of course, friendly with us and appreciative of what we were doing. But pointedly, they used to ask, Sir, is it a human rights violation only if somebody is killed in a police lockup, but not if he is banished from the village saying you are untouchable? Is it not a human rights violation? I still remember answering that in that case, so you are being banished by another citizen. It is between two citizens and you can approach the law. Whereas when the state itself oppresses someone, there is no recourse, uh, practically no recourse in the law and therefore we are not concerned about untouchability as a human rights issue. I, that is the answer we gave, I myself gave until 1985. 
1985 July 17th was a major incident in what is today Prakasham district, a village called Karam Chedu. Now we went into Karam Chedu and started defending the rights of the Dalits as against the landlords, where state was not directly involved, but state was only an indirect party. But uh, then, um, uh, the, when we entered uh, the uh, relationships of a landlord and a, you know, I mean, agriculture laborer or upper caste and the Dalits, and later when we started taking the question of dowry death, you know, the factional violence and all that, uh, I think without even our knowledge, we were getting into a larger uh, terrain than the one which uh, brought us into being, uh, you know, in the wake of uh, Naxalite uh, movement. So once we say that uh, torture is wrong. It's impossible for civil rights movement to say torture of Naxalites is wrong. You have to say torture is wrong. Once you say torture is wrong, you have to look at who else is being tortured. So we had to look. In the beginning, police used to make fun of us. That look, when you come to a police station asking for the release or uh, to somebody to be produced in court who happens to be a radical, he's in the lockup. There are 10 more people in the lockup along with him. Why don't you talk about them? Police, of course, were not interested that we should talk about them. They were interested in exposing our one sidedness. But we learnt a lesson from that. So we started saying the torture is wrong. Now, if torture is wrong, then you have to answer many more questions. Because you are saying torture not only of a political revolutionary, but also of a criminal is wrong. Then you have to answer for yourself what is crime? What is civil rights movement's understanding of crime? Is it the same thing as that of the system? Or do you have a different understanding? Can you be satisfied with a totally subversive understanding that can you say that all crime is protest? Obviously, it is not. There is some crime which even ordinary people don't like. So, one has to formulate a notion of crime. So, the movement started expanding. Well, Karna and I have had bitter fights through the years, bitter political fights. It's very odd, we didn't have personal differences. But all the time we had these fights about almost every other political issue. It has been about the political violence of the parties. I've been saying, how can you say this is only counter violence? How do you build accountability? While we, you can challenge state you know, violence, while you can challenge state repression. If people, if women have a hope in the revolution, don't we have a right to say this should be your agenda, this should be your perspective? From a human rights point of view, situations where one had to address these movements started coming up again and again. Arbitrary actions, calling somebody an informer without much of a reason, going to a house to kill somebody or beat up somebody, finding him not there, finding his brother, beating up that fellow and killing them, killing him, wantonly, knowingly, and so on and so forth. Uh, targeting also poor people who may have become agents of the landlords uh, because they don't have anything to eat. Not differentiating between the way you have to deal with such a person and with the landlord himself, not making a differentiation. No, number of problems did come up. So one was finding it difficult to avoid addressing these uh, movements. So one issue that came up is, do we address them? If so, how? Time and again in the APCLC executive, this was coming up. That is, we should, should we confine ourselves to state violence? criticism of state violence and then action against state violence or should we also condemn violence of political parties. Basically it was PW. You can't condemn PW violence. PW violence is something which does not deal with human rights and so it cannot be condemned. On this, we had uh, several attempts were made to bring about this, even when I was the president, and I, I, I did not allow them to raise this debate because I used to tell them that it has to be done because you can't go about killing people in large numbers and say we can't criticize them. We have got to criticize them because they are operating in public sphere. We can't go and secretly tell them. We have got to tell them publicly because they are operating, do they, uh, they are doing their killings in public sphere, justifying them also. See, everybody, if any, any and everybody says, they may not accept. I have particularly a special pl place because I, I think I have a ringside seat, I am entitled to a ringside seat because I have been defending them in court and out of court without becoming a part of them. And I don't think I can ever become a part of any political organization. I believe I have to be in the dissent. Tomorrow if the communists also come to power or if uh, PW comes to power, uh, surely I will be continuing the same job. Till such time when they really 
think that what revolution is about is also about human rights. అంటే దాంట్లో ఒకటి ఒకటి రెండు అంశాలు ఉన్నాయండి ఒకటి వచ్చి ఈ సరెండర్ ఆ బాంబ్స్ అది ఫస్ట్ వాళ్ళ టాక్ బిగినింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద టాక్స్లో ఇన్సిస్ చేస్తే ఎనీ టాక్ విల్ ఫెయిల్ after uh, the interview they were mentioning that they are also working out the modalities of the talks if the government is willing but the question is whether the government is willing to take a political decision who should tell us then in fact the chief minister alone is capable exactly of i was decision. about yeah let's but meet then him then when some idea is born you got to name the child so we called it consent citizens committee and then i, I was there aragopal was there shankaran is the new person with uh, a sort of fresh credibility available to him otherwise they may dismiss this kanna birani is an acolyte lawyer so we formed this body then we had we had a conference with chandrababu naidu as concerned citizen committee we had a frank discussion and we said that unless you stop encounters the police administration will not spruce up so if you want to spruce the police administration you should ask them to stop encounter killings and start in investigating honestly because what is happening is they are not able to investigate now they would like to kill because that is the easier task and also if you kill naxalites you get money alive or dead 5 lakhs 3 lakhs 2 lakhs you get money me vidram galsi poyaru ఓఎస్ఎస్ పబ్లిక్ గార్డెన్ అది అసెంబ్లీ హాల్ అక్కడ పోగానే అన్నాడు రే ఈ అసెంబ్లీ హాల్ ఇది చట్టం రా ఇది అంత ఇక్కడ చట్టాలు తయారు చేసి నా కొడుకులు మా నన్ను ఎత్తిన కొడతారు అంటాడు అంతలోనే గుర్రాలు వచ్చినాయి గుర్రాలు వచ్చి తిరుగుతున్నాయి ఎస్బీ వాళ్ళు వచ్చినారు వాళ్ళు వచ్చినారు వీళ్ళు వచ్చినారు అంటే ఈయన వచ్చిండు మేము వచ్చినాం అని వాళ్ళు ఎంత రే ఇప్పుడు గుర్రాలు వచ్చినాయి కొంచెం సేపు అయినాక గార్దులు వస్తాయి రా అన్నాడు అంతలోనే డర్ డర్ మని సౌండ్ అనుకుంటా చీఫ్ మినిస్టర్ గారి వచ్చింది చంద్రబాబు నాయుడు అక్కడికి వెళ్ళి పోగానే మేము ఇద్దరం పోయినాం పోయేసేసేసి అక్కడ చీఫ్ మినిస్టర్ గారు ఇప్పుడు వస్తున్నారా అంటే అన్నారు గద్దర్ గారు మీ ఆరోగ్యం ఎలా ఉంది అన్నాడు అంటే పర్లేదండి అన్న ఆ బుల్లెట్ సంగతి ఏంది అన్నాడు అట్లనే ఉన్నది అన్నాడు మీరు చెప్పండి నేను అమెరికాకు పంపించి ఆ బుల్లెట్ తీపిస్తా అన్నాడు అనగానే బాగుంది వే మీరే మీరే కాలుస్తారు మీరే బుల్లెట్ తీస్తారా అన్నాడు అని 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 అదేమైంది ఆ ఎన్క్వైరీ కమిషన్ మీ ఎన్క్వైరీ కమిషన్ కమిషన్ పోయింది కనాబిరామన్ గారు మీరు లాయర్లు మీతో ఎక్కడ మాట్లాడగలం ఏడగలగలం పోతుందని ఒక మాట చెప్పాడు తాను రాసుకున్న చట్టాన్ని తాను వాయిలేట్ చేయడమే ఫాసిజం మిస్టర్ నాయుడు అవుట్ ఆఫ్ మై ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఐఎమ్ టెలింగ్ నువ్వు రాసుకున్న చట్టాన్ని నువ్వు ఇంప్లిమెంట్ చేయమంటుంటే చేయం ఎందుకంటే నాకు అర్థం కాదు ఇది ఎప్పుడైతే నువ్వు వాయిలేట్ చేస్తావో ప్రపంచ చరిత్ర చదువుకో హిస్టరీ వరల్డ్ హిస్టరీ చదువుకో అక్కడనే మహానుభావులందరూ పతనం అయిపోయారు బట్ చీఫ్ మినిస్టర్ ఇన్ ది నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీ ఎయిట్ ఏప్రిల్ డిస్కషన్స్ హీ డిస్టింగ్విష్ బిట్వీన్ వాట్ ఇస్ కాల్ ఫేక్ ఎన్కౌంటర్ వెర్ ది ఎన్కౌంటర్ ఇస్ నాట్ రియల్ అండ్ ది రియల్ ఎన్కౌంటర్ బికాస్ వెన్ the nuxlite gun and the police face to face both are having guns there could be some casualties encounter but he said that we, there will be nothing called fake encounter he will stop anything called fake encounter these things will stop he did give an assurance in 98 similarly the people's war people also told us they attach great value to human life they are not in fact they even said that they are not for violence but they are forced to take to arms because of the violence by the state so if the state stops its encounters and its harassment they will also stop the violence because there is only a response 
I mean, they say they will, they didn't say they will stop, it will automatically stop. I mean, that sort of a logic they were saying. But then, then the state didn't keep its word, nor did in a way people's word also did not keep their word. 99 end, I think those famous encounter took place in which those two top leaders were also killed. Nala Adiradi and Santosh Reddy. So that brought about a complete change in the party's attitude because then they finished for the Home Minister, Mother Reddy, February 2008, February or March 2000. So we when we met Chief Minister in April 2000, by the time the elections also had taken place. So the Chief Minister said, look, it's, it's a law and order problem. They killed my own Home Minister. How do you expect me to? Their people, people are with me, they voted me to power. People's or Agnetha Ramakrishna Sudakar, Tadikalu, Donna Police and Gala Jirini, Akara, Police and Kalusko and Karinchi, Rao and Jirini, Rally the Patu Kuni, Galamandu Chaukas on the Dadapa, Rendelakshan on the Paika, Irodu, Isabako Chaukas on the Rally, put a staging chair to the Nathalandro Staji Akaranik Sitapatanaru, Visha Shali, Live Delgashara, Ivadanaki, Tina and Python Chess on the Tina and Tim Sikapan Chess. It's a very peculiar situation where radical politics is talking to conservative politics. Radical politics which believes in total social transformation and conservative politics which believes in status quo. It is because of the public opinion, favorable opinion of the public for talks that these political parties had to make it part of their manifesto. It is not because they like Naxalites not because they hated violence, but because people are saying that Naxalites must hold talks. It was never clear, very clear what they would talk. If you have a movement like the Naga movement, there can be a discussion. We will give you autonomy, not independence. You can't have half a revolution, either you have a revolution, you do not have a revolution. So, what could be the talks? This is part of the joke behind it. But we said there can be talks not about the aims and goals, but about a code of conduct. That both will agree that even as they fight each other, they won't harass innocent people. They won't harass unarmed civilians in between. And the Maoists will allow the ordinary day-to-day -day administration to go on so that schools can run, elections can take place, whatever. And police also will allow ordinary movements to go on. Now the problem in uh, lots of areas where Maoists are active is the farmers agitate for a uh, better price. The police will call the leader and say, who is behind you? They are behind you. So that should stop. So on both sides, ordinary people's ordinary life, including ordinary agitations and movements, including also ordinary 
politics other than Maoist politics and also Maoist politics should be allowed to go on. This could have been a code of conduct agreed upon by both parties which would have uh, uh, made things lighter for the people. That is even today a possible framework of talks. Unfortunately, the talks uh, went entirely, I mean, nobody had any clue how they would be conducted. Uh, the whole thing was practically run by the TV channels. In fact, to be very frank, the TV channels ran the talks. And naturally, when you have a camera, you take extreme positions, at least in the beginning. If people learn now, only after some time, they will learn moderate positions. So the whole thing broke down. Our understanding is that the government of Andhra Pradesh was never serious and they deliberately broke it. Janashakti Tarpana Gatondo Prabutonto Jarina Churchello Palguna Shanti Churchella Pratinidini Riazni Prabutome Hatija Shindani Mukemantri Vayas Rai Security BGP Viridar Galse Riazno Police Lodor Hatija in Chenda Nevisham as Pastor Jasuna. Nobody loves their school, war school, to know what ceasefire is all about. You read in the papers, you know. So we are saying these are the ceasefire conditions. Yes, they, they nominated their mediators, you nominated, you accepted their mediators as your mediators. You are all their mediators, I am their mediator. Government accepted that we, you are also our mediator. All the police officers were present, were party to this, this kind of appointments. Why didn't they protest? If they think that the only solution is liquidation. It's very, it's very dishonest, isn't it? You ask, ask them to come for talks, you go reconnoitre and uh, know, know their hideouts. While we are, they are discussing, unarmed they come here and discuss things with you. You go and reconnoitre and that is fairness, is it? What sort of a fairness is that? Why did the talks fail? Please? Talks fail because the government did not want to succeed. They do not want to distribute land to the poor. The government does not want to improve the living conditions of the people. The government does not want to see that discontent disappears from this land. No government wants. Not certainly a government which thinks, believes in Adam Smith's economics. Nalamala Atavi Prantolo, Ito Vatana Inca Kunasautrundi. In Contalo, Maoist Party, Rasta Karadashi Mado, Murti Taravata Kuda. Inca Nalamaladulone, Taladach Kuna, Maoist Lakosam, Kuning Operations, Mumaranga Kunasautunai. Helicopter Lagi Greyhounds, Balagalu, Mark Aparunchi, Adavi Prantoloki, Mumaranga Vilusunai. The director camp level can drive pain. Entry by Serki was a sentry ever at the owner or lady sentry. I would have first fire open the Serki Mata. Giving due credit to the enemy once again. And he died fighting. Are you going to continue this process? Yes, we will continue this process. Madoka encounter be a fake encounter worker, you know, Arabic. Bilkul a clean encounter, either Koibi Jaka de Sakta. I kill a bad Mushkila, I kill Konkarega fake encounter of Naga. He will commit himself to. All sorts of judicial uh, this thing. But I would again appeal to all those who are sympathizers, all those who are Maoists, please surrender. It is not a worthwhile game anymore. And what is more, we as a state and a police department, we are only going to strengthen the Greyhounds further. How can you call yourself an elected people's representative if you are not able to check the impunity you are granted to the police? For 35 years this impunity is going on in this country. For 35 years in this state I am witnessing this impunity. Anybody connected with the government is sanctioned impunity. That's what it has come to. There must be a limit to this kind of a thing. 
I will not really rest until government killings stop. Government should not have the power either to delegate or to itself take to killing people. It is increasing all over the globe. It is not simply India. I have full confidence that someday or other, whether I am alive or not, efforts of people like us will not fail. We have been fighting for so many years. We can't suddenly say that, uh, no, this is not possible. We want to close shop. No. So far as human life is concerned, such an attitude cannot be taken. We will carry on. And some, someday, I am sure, even Sisyphus would have dreamt that he will roll the uh, stone to the hilltop. And I do believe in that.